Good afternoon, everyone. Hope you all are doing well. Welcome to the groundbreaking ceremony for Marcella Gardens and Ruth Teague Homes. Two new projects coming to South LA. Or shall I say two new permanent supportive housing uh, projects that are coming uh, to South LA to bring much needed housing for our unhoused residents, our unhoused citizens, and the people in our community. I am particularly happy um, to be in partnership with New Economics for Women and Amity Foundation. This project would not be possible without uh, those two um, prominent organizations. Um, and I am particularly a um, little emotional and proud at the same time. I'm glad the sun is shining today because it lets me know um, that a piece of heaven opened up just enough to allow Ruth to look down upon us because I know that she would have been so proud of this moment um, and probably wouldn't have wanted us to recognize her in that way. Um, but given the work, um, the world of work that she's done, um, not only in the affordable housing space, but ensuring that the type of resources that are for our most vulnerable population um, is, is done in the most immaculate way, that the architecture and everything that has gone into a project is built with respect and with clients at the center of that, not just putting up anything just because we need housing, we know we need housing, but making sure it's the type of housing that shows that we respect the people that are gonna be living there. Ruth would have had her choice words. Um, many of us that know her personally know some of those choice words, um, but some of them would have been how she's so proud of the partnership, recognizing the construction partnership with Dreyfus Construction, who has been completely open to ensuring that local hire takes place so young men and women have an opportunity towards a career path and an opportunity to work on projects like this in their community. Um, so without further uh, ado, I, I just wanna make sure that we take a moment um, to not only recognize the significance of this project and what it means to the Coalition for Responsible Community Development and the work that it continues to do in this community, but how one of our founders of CRCD, Ruth T, paved the way and her spirit continues to flow through the energy and services that we continue to provide uh, to this community. Uh, before I end, I definitely wanna thank our councilman and our mayor for continuing to support not only CRCD, but continuing to fight for and ensure with intentionality that resources flow through the South LA community. So if we can give them a round of applause, I really appreciate that and really appreciate you all for your leadership. So without said, I won't use Summer Ruth, Ruth Teague's uh, choice word, but let's get this um, show on the world. <laughs> You can put whatever you want in the middle of that. So first I would like to bring up our councilman, Councilman Kern Price, um, who has been a champion, um, not only for our organization, but a champion for ensuring that as much as many affordable housing projects is built as quickly as possible um, in his district. Um, there's a new project across the street that CRCD was involved with. I'm in partnership with LA Family Housing, and we stand here today um, because of his leadership. And thank you, Karen, uh, Councilman Price, and I'll bring him up. Thank, thank you, Mark. Uh, let's give it for Mark. He really has been a real, <clears throat> a real pioneer. And as our mayor says, he's been an angel. He's been an angel with some, with some real wings, and he knows how to fly. We, we appreciate him, uh, but we're happy to see our mayor, uh, Garcetti. We're going to be hearing from him momentarily. Uh, I believe our supervisor, Holly Mitchell, is on her way. Uh, but we have our other partners here with us, uh, B. Stolzer from New Economics from Women, of course, and Doug Bond from Amity. You're also going to be hearing from them. Uh, but, Mark, it's really been an honor working with you and your organization over the past 
uh, several years. Uh, CRCD, of course, has been integral uh, in uh, a number of transformative projects and activities in CD9. And so, again, I just want to thank you and your board. I know your board is here. Uh, other teammates are here uh, for all the stuff, all the stuff that CRC does. I mean, it's not just housing, right? Not just housing, um, but uh, job training, culture, arts, CRC is there. Uh, community beautification, youth development, and, of course, affordable housing. But it just demonstrates a, a commitment, ongoing commitment uh, of the board uh, and of the members to make sure that, uh, that they are represented and that our community is represented. <clears throat> well, Mr. Mayor, uh, again, with your enthusiastic support, this is the fourth event uh, dedicated uh, to uh, housing in our district in the past two weeks, in the past two weeks. Yeah, let's give it up. <clears throat> and so I'm excited that we're breaking ground today uh, on two, um, two developments uh, that are going to house over 100 homeless individuals, Tay and others who are in need. This is an unprecedented uh, time, you know, and so we need an unprecedented number of affordable housing uh, units up. And so it doesn't matter if it's veterans or victims of domestic violence or to our senior community, we want to meet the need. <clears throat> Through my efforts and with uh, the, the, uh, the mayor's uh, support and the council's blessing, uh, the city has contributed nearly $20 million in funding, $20 million for these two developments that we're breaking ground on today. That's a real investment uh, in the community. <clears throat> Not, not enough can be said about Ruth Teague. Um, Mark uh, shared a few tidbits with us. But everyone who knew Ruth knows that she was bold and courageous, uh, as he said. She was a visionary and a real bright light, uh, not just here in CD9, but in South LA and in the city of Los Angeles. She was certainly ahead, was ahead of her time. Uh, one of the first B, I understand, to introduce the term permanent supportive housing. Uh, and so she, uh, through her work and her efforts, uh, has been able to impact literally hundreds of thousands of others uh, in ways that uh, they will never know. One of her greatest accomplishments, of course, was her role in founding CRCD. Uh, and Mark, sometimes you have to tell me the rest of that story <laughs> because I know she was a powerhouse all the way. Uh, again, let's give Ruth Teague a hand of applause in absentia. <clears throat> she would certainly agree that our work is never complete until everybody is off the streets. Everybody is off the streets. Uh, and as long as there are people living on the streets and youth without mentors, we got work to do. Uh, rising rents, the high cost of living have created extreme hardships for far too many people. And that has been a, 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 dr a dramatic uh, and a notice noticeable obstacle. Um, Homelessness is, is at an all-time high, and being in, CD9 has the dubious distinction of, of having the second largest concentration of homeless individuals in CD9. And so I'm especially uh, sensitive to that, Mayor, and especially uh, committed to making sure that we turn that around. You know, my mission has been to prioritize development of more affordable housing units. Over the past three years, I've worked tirelessly with my team to approve over 2,400 units of affordable housing, of which uh, 900 units are going to be completed by the end of next year. And you say, that year's a long time. Well, you know, sometimes it takes a long time. But they're, it's in the pipeline, you know, just like this one is. Now, we prepare for the next uh, series of ongoing efforts to bring down homelessness in the 9th District. The 112 units that we're breaking ground on today is a step a step in the right direction, uh, and I'm proud of the progress that we're, that we're making here in the ninth. But I know, <laughs> I know there is more to be done, a lot more to be done. And so, with that, I'm looking forward to coming back here for the ribbon cutting. It's one thing for a groundbreaking, but another thing for the ribbon cutting. Uh, and so, we're excited uh, that again we're going to be able to serve youth and families, uh, and uh, they're going to be calling uh, Ruth Teague Homes and Marcella Gardens home, uh, and we're going to be very proud. Once again, uh, I just want to thank the city family and the, uh, the county family uh, for their for their work, the extraordinary uh, public-private partnership, 
uh, that has come together to make this uh, project possible. Uh, we know that uh, uh, it's a commitment that you share with our office and, and everyone here uh, to making sure that uh, we're making L.A. a better place to live, a better place to live uh, and a place for individuals to call home. Let me uh, just give a quick shout out to our friends at Channel 35 uh, that are here. We certainly appreciate their presence. Uh, and uh, my staff, uh, Sherilyn, um, Dee Dee, James and Janice uh, and Joel uh, are here. And so uh, team, uh, pr the price team, Team 9 is in the house. And we're going to be with you all the way, all the way, uh, as we work together to uh, come up with the solutions come up with the, uh, with the answers to some of the problems we're facing to change this trajectory. Uh, but, but now it's my honor and pleasure to introduce someone who's really been a champion for social justice and equity uh, in our city. Uh, our mayor has been steadfast in his commitment to uh, addressing this, the issue of homelessness. You may recall in, his, uh, in the budget uh, remarks uh, last uh, week or so, two weeks or so, he committed a billion dollars, that's a billion with a B, to this homelessness, yeah, give it up for this homelessness <laughs> crisis conundrum <laughs> that we're in. And it certainly caught the federal judge's attention, didn't it? Uh, and, <laughs> and, it caught, <laughs> and it caught our attention, too. We're so proud, so honored uh, to welcome to the stage uh, our mayor, uh, the Honorable uh, Eric Garcetti. Thank you. Let's give it up for our great council member of the 9th District, his entire team. This doesn't happen without him. Curran Price, please show him some love. Thank you, Curran, for your friendship, your commitment over many years of serving communities across the Southland and here. You know, how do you build a new 9th District? How do you build the city of tomorrow? You build it one project at a time, one coalition at a time, one group of caring individuals at a time like we see here today. And I couldn't be more excited to be together with this caring group of individuals. Um, thank you for your advocacy. Thank you for your leadership. Thank you for your commitment uh, to addressing homelessness in South Los Angeles. Um, this is a war. You know, I, th I think back of my grandfather who raised a family not far from here. In fact, 68th L Street Elementary School is renamed for my father now. It's the Gil Garcetti Learning Academy. And he was an immigrant from Mexico who... Uh, uh, volunteered because he wasn't a citizen even though he came here as a baby he wasn't a citizen he volunteered in World War II to go fight never knowing whether he'd come back uh, to see his young son and daughter uh, my father and my aunt and uh, he did it because he believed in the ideals that we were fighting for and when it comes to the fight this war against homelessness it's the same thing there are days in which you wonder will we be overwhelmed will we win and think about that in World War II we thought that not only was democracy at stake. Not only was freedom at stake, but our country was. And yet we found the way to come together across geography and ethnicity. We came ac across generations to fight and to win that war. And that's what this is about as well. One battle at a time, one project, one campaign at a time. We're going to win this war, make no mistake. And I want to thank one of our field marshals in that. Uh, Mark, you have been an incredible friend for many, many years. 20 years I've been in in uh, public service to the city of Los Angeles. Um, Twelve of those as council member and six as council president when we first got to know each other uh, better. Uh, but you have helped bring so many Angelinos home. And for those that are already home, you've given a meaning to what home means in a community. You look at the four parts of CRCD, it's each one of those, but the second C is the most important. Because how do you build community? That's a tough thing to do. But you've shown the model. It's about culture. It's about hope. It's about belief. It's about second and third chances. It's about coalitions and bringing people together. And yes, not just settling for any development, but responsible development. So thank you to you and your team. And you certainly have superstars. B, gracias por tantos décadas de trabajo. So much time that I've seen that model. And women often get written out of that history. So it's so nice to see Ruth Teague, to see you as a fellow warrior, when Ruth co-founded uh, CRCD in 2005, um, she had a vision that's like B. Stotzer, who has been, to me, one of the great heroes, great heroes of this city for a long time, an angel in this city of angels. 
And when we look here, and it's true, Curran, people often say, be careful which groundbreakings you go to because you don't know if you'll ever get a ribbon cutting. But when you have this team together, you have the confidence that this groundbreaking will result in a ribbon cutting uh, that will not only push forward what we need to see, but push it forward with an even stronger model than we have ever seen before. And I also want to thank Supervisor Holly Mitchell. People say the city, the county, the federal government, the state, they never work together. I call BS on that because we've got federal money, we've got state money, we've got county money, we've got city money, from the building to the operations. And that's what it takes, unfortunately. You, you make a sandwich in Los Angeles, we're only each allowed one or two layers of that sandwich, but it is mighty good sandwich when we finish it. And now to see this, in, in, uh, when we were together in November, to mark the grand opening of residence on Maine, that place is now home to a dozen families of 36 people who transitioned out of foster care. My wife and I are, are foster parents, um, and we've seen firsthand, we've witnessed, bore witness to what happens when we don't provide for our youngest. But it's a proof of the power of partnership to see that we don't give up on any young person. We don't care where we, you've come from. We only care where you want to go to. And to have two more projects that will bring 112 units, 112 units. Look at the size of this. How often, you know, this could be a concert hall. This could be a new business coming. But this is 112 homes that hundreds and one day thousands of people will have lived in. Um, homes for families, for transition age youth, for veterans, which I thank you for as a veteran myself. And this wouldn't happen without this coalition. Uh, to Doug and Amity Foundation, thank you for the incredible work that you continue to do as well. And Marseille and Ruth Teague uh, helps us be the eighth, and we're still in the first third of this year, eight projects, HHH-funded projects this year, 45 more in the works. And sometimes you hear some criticism of, of Prop H. Let me set the record straight. Two years early, 1,000 more units, 15,000 per unit less than we promised. That's the HHH record, one I'm very proud of, and thank you to the voters. Now, I know some voters thought voting for HHH would end homelessness. It's not going to end it on its own. We're going to have to marshal our resources for many campaigns, for many um, uh, pushes, including in the state. And I want to pause and thank our governor for putting out $12 billion with a B. Thank you for your credit for $1 billion, but you'll get the credit as soon as you pass the budget uh, on Thursday. It's all yours. The governor's talked about $12 billion, and we're going to try to build with him because that is historic, and I don't look a gift horse in the mouth at all. That, thank you, governor, for boldly saying that for two years, and we'll see if we can stretch that maybe to $20 billion over four years because that would truly be a game changer for us here as well. Um, and to see the projects that are coming up, setting our post-HHH goals, which we better get ready for now, I have a lot of reason to be optimistic that the state will see this crisis and be field marshals. I just came back from Washington, D.C., where I sat down with the head of the Domestic Policy Council, Susan Rice, uh, with Speaker Pelosi and others to talk about the need for housing, to try to extend our project room key for an extra year if we can. These things are going to be critical so that we don't push more people into homelessness as we're taking people off the streets as well and meet it, as we've all been saying, the council and myself, a FEMA-level response. And thank you this year that FEMA did it during a pandemic. But let's not walk away from that fight when the pandemic is over. I can't say the word pandemic without also saying, please, everybody, from our great construction workers who we kept working during this pandemic by authorizing that construction could continue in this city, to folks that are here, get your vaccine. And if there are people you know who haven't, a lot of people, it's not that people are anti-vax, they're kind of, I'll get around to it. This is the time to do that. We're operating about 5% capacity. In other words, we can do 95% more vaccines than we're actually doing right now. And so we have to make sure in places like South L.A., and, and Kern Price has been a champion, night clinics, uh, bringing the mobile clinics, one of the first ones was right here that we brought. Um, we now have to be all vaccine hunters, find folks, bring them in, and make sure that they're safe because in certain neighborhoods we only have about 35, 38 percent parts of this council district. And I'm committed to, with you, I know, council member, to getting that up as well. The American Rescue Plan is also another piece that will overlay on a great day like this. We just found out double what we expected and had lobbied for. 3,300 additional housing vouchers will come in as we push for the right to housing, which should make Section 8 housing choice vouchers a universal entitlement, something I asked our president to consider supporting as a candidate, which he did, and is now a president who supports that idea. We now have to get Congress behind that. So like food stamps or like uh, unemployment insurance or like Medicaid, which we call Medi-Cal, you shouldn't have a lottery 
to see if you get help. Right now, it's one out of eight people who need a housing assistance voucher get it in Los Angeles. That means seven out of eight are living in tents and cars and all around our city. So it has been a dark and painful year, but this is like beautiful sunshine coming down here in Council District 9 in our city of angels. Hope is here. It's not just hanging on the horizon anymore. It's right here. We can feel it. And thank you for being a part of it. I see. And gracias a Telemundo para venir. I'm going to say a couple words in Spanish, and then I'm going to hand it back to our, our council member. Estamos aquí para inaugurar dos proyectos más, los cuales traerán 112 unidades de viviendas a bajo costo y con servicios de apoyo al sur de Los Ángeles en el distrito de concejal Curren Price. Hogares para familias jóvenes en edad de transición y veteranos que llevan mucho tiempo sin un hogar. Solo en este año, con las casas de Ruth Teague y Marsella Gardens, hemos inaugurado ocho proyectos financiados por el Fondo HHH, gracias a los votantes por su confianza. Y hay 45 más proyectos en proceso. Entonces, ¿qué significa este para, esto para nuestro programa de vivienda asequible? Estamos a dos años antes de lo pro programado y estamos gastando menos para construir más, un promedio de 15 mil dólares por, por unidad, para mil unidades más de lo prometido. Ha sido un año muy difícil, pero estamos muy, muy cerca de lograr nuestro objetivo. Hay esperanza en este vecindario, en nuestra ciudad, en nuestra nación, y con esta inauguración nos acercamos más a alojar a nuestros vecinos más Vulnerables. Muchísimas gracias. Congratulations, everybody, and thank you. Let's get it done. Or to Mark. Thank you. Let's give it up for our mayor and our councilman. Thank you so much. Would like to bring up a young man um, named Lamont Harrell, who has been very involved in CRCD implement programs at CRCD. Before graduating from CRCD Academy in 2020, Lamont was an active member in the South LA Youth Bill, AmeriCorps, Jobs for Los Angeles Graduates, which are two national programs, the Summer Youth Employment Program that the councilman and the mayor has helped us to secure resources for, for countless years, and earned a fellowship from the Annie E. Casey Foundation for his leadership qualities. When he graduated last year, he received a scholarship from Poets in Autumn that he invested in furthering his education and trade cert certification in carpentry at LA Trade Tech Community College and maintained a 4.0 GPA while doing forklift training at night. We are proud to have him working with Gonzalo Gonzalez Construction on Marcella Gardens and are, very, uh, are happy that he can be here with us today. Someone from the neighborhood, someone's working in the neighborhood, and someone who is an example of what CRCD programs can produce and what he has produced for CRCD. Lamont. Uh, thank you for that introduction. Um, sorry, I didn't bring my suit today. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'd like to start off by saying thank you to all, all you guys for the recognition, um, especially the work you guys are putting on to, in towards, um, you know, getting people off the streets. Um, me personally, me and my family, we come from the streets. You know, my mom, growing up, my mom, we lived on Skid Row uh, in DV shelters uh, growing up. So uh, I didn't have my first, like, real home till I was, like, about five, six. Um, but once she nabbed that, she never let that go. You know, she never got any evictions or anything close to that. Um, and, you know, looking back, you know, I didn't really even notice that we were struggling until now because, you know, she always kept it to where, you know, we were always going out to theme parks and, you know, she was doing the best she can to make sure we would li still live in our childhood. Um, so um, as I got older, I kind of I kind of got lost, um, especially with my, my with my teenage years, um, just running with the wrong crowds, doing bad in school. Um, I've always been a smart kid, but I've always felt like, you know, a lot of the information that I was attaining and a lot of the things I was doing was kind of a waste of time to me. Um, so I kind of I kind of ventured out and I did other things, um, things I'm not proud of. Um, 
in 2019, I ended up getting uh, arrested. Um, and then that kind of changed my life. Um, for the first time I was sitting in a cell, I didn't know what to do. Um, and I noticed my mom, she was the only one that was really there for me, you know, um, the only one accepting my calls, the only one that she bailed me out. Um, so after I got out, you know, I knew that something had to change, you know, I couldn't keep going back there. Cause you know, that, that, that really hurt her throughout my whole life. She put me in charter school so, so she could make sure I was, I, I was good, you know? So right there, I felt like I was kind of letting her down. Um, I had found out about CRCD and going into it, I didn't think it was really going to be, you know, the venture that it, it turned out to be, you know, um, it's kind of going into it, especially for me being from, you know, the hood and all that. And woo, 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 it's like, it's kind of, it's kind of, it kind of felt corny. Um, you know, the beginning of it, you know, the, 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 the icebreakers and all that, but I mean, you get to see the educational part of it and you see, you see like the community in it. Um, CRCD, they actually kind of make you feel like, like, like they been knew you, like, you know, they, like they know your parents and like, they made a promise to your parents to bring you up. Um, I've never felt that before in any type of school setting. Um, so when the pandemic hit, I kind of felt like I was going to fall off. Um, I kind of felt like I wasn't going to have any support. Um, I still hadn't finished my high school diploma yet, but you know, sure enough, they was calling my phone, you know, do you need any toiletries? Do you need any extra money, any support, any, any way? And at the time I didn't. So I, you know, I, I kind of passed it by to let other people, you know, and, and get that little opportunity. But I mean, the fact that they were calling me, you know, and, 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 and checking up on me, that, that made it, that made it seem like, you know, I was even more part of their family, you know, that they really cared about, you know, how my life went. Um, after, after I had graduated in 2019, I mean, 2020, June, um, and it was like, even after that, I thought it was done. CRCD for me was, you know, it was, it was over, you know, I, I, I went there to get what I, what I got. I got my forklift, my HBI, um, CPR, um, a bunch of other things, you know, um, and then even with the leap, the leap foundation that kind of like, cause I never been out of California. So that kind of made me, uh, it, it gave me a perspective on, you know, how other people, you know, relate to my struggle and how I'm not the only one going through my struggle. Um, so with all that, like with the COVID, I thought, you know, it was done with my high school diploma. I thought it was done, but the, uh, sure enough, again, they were still calling me Lamont. You still got, you still got hours with, with SYEP and you still got, you still got things to do. You know, there's still people interested in you, you know, um, so I kind of like, I got back to it, you know, started coming back in. Um, I, I was with them. I was doing my hours for community service and, uh, I had, I had completed that. Um, as of two weeks ago, I'm felony free. Um, so yeah, <laughs> uh, I'm at, right now I'm really making my mom proud. You know, I'm, I'm really doing what she, what she really, what she really wanted me to do. Um, so it was like, what I feel, what I feel is just, it's just overwhelming. Like I could really talk about this all day. Like, you know, I, I, I've been, I've been scheduled to do like one or two minute interviews and it, it ended up going like 10 minutes, 20 minutes, you know? So it's like, um, yeah, I'm just, I'm just grateful for where I am for real, for real. Like this is like, I, I, I just realized like a, a week ago, like, you know, right now, right now in this moment, I am the best I've ever been, you know? Um, and that's financially, um, educational, spiritually, like, you know, emotionally, everything like I, I'm good. And, you know, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to build the, I'm trying to set the, set up the building blocks for my family, you know, right now, um, with, when that would, that would be like getting my credit right. Um, you know, you know, finishing college and all that, you know, cause right now I'm an undergraduate. I've only had my, my, my first semester uh, done, but I mean, I'm, I'm pushing, I'm pushing past that cause I am the first to graduate in my family from high school. So it's like a lot, I, I, I got, I got a lot planned, you know, especially for my little brothers and my, and my niece, uh, you know, I want to, I want to show them things that, you know, I never had, I never had growing up. Uh, and that would be like, you know, support and, you know, um, people telling me how to get credit, how to start my credit, how to go through school without, uh, without being in debt and stuff like that. And I'm glad that I, I caught it at the point that I did, but I, I wish, I wish I knew about CRCD five years ago, 10, cause I would be, I'll be in a much better spot, you know, but again, I'm, I'm, I'm really grateful for the spot I am. And I just want to thank everybody for coming out and everybody that gave me the opportunity to be where I am. Thank you. Let's give it up again for Lamont. One more time. You know, Lamont is a representative of so many young people um, in the neighborhood. He truly is. He truly is a leader um, within the CRCD family. Um, so thank you, Lamont, for what you continue to do 
and what you continue to inspire to do. Um, because if you didn't know, you're a role model not only for your family, but for a lot of the young people that's coming through the doors just like you did at CRCD. So thank you for everything you do, man. Thank you. Before, oh, <laughs> I would like to now bring up uh, one of our partners uh, with New Economic for Women's. Um, but before I bring up Beatrice uh, Solis, I would like to recognize our board chair, Antonio Manning, if you could throw your hands up, um, for representing the board of directors, who is a supportive board and a supportive chair. Thank you for all you do, Antonio. And now I would like to bring up Beatrice Solis. I think the mayor um, did a fantastic job. I think you stole my thunder and my introductory um, for B, but you truly are an angel, and thank you um, for being an angel with this project. You've been a true partner not only on this project, but so many more ventures that we're looking at. So without further ado, B. I was told to be quick and fast, so here it goes. <laughs> Thank you, Mark, uh, Councilman Price, Mayor Garcetti, for your heart and your p passion, uh, for Supervisor Mitchell, I don't see, her. hopefully she's coming, and for helping us especially make today possible. As you all know, New Economics for Women has been a pioneer in the economic mobility <clears throat> space. We are known for creating wealth accelerators for women, especially Latinas, in uh, Los Angeles, such as affordable housing for single parents, home ownership, entrepreneurship, small business lending, and so much more. Coalition for Responsible Community Development and New Economics for Women have powerful shared experiences and strong values uh, that have sparked a mindset for economic equity with these projects. Today marks such an important milestone in our collective histories. A Latina-led organization and a black-led organization partnered to build the largest affordable housing project in South Los Angeles right here. The largest um, and not the last, I'm sure. Uh, Ruth Teague would not only yell and scream and do all sorts of other things, knowing Ruth the way I did. Um, but more than that, she would literally be able to be here and hug everyone for making it happen and for making sure that the bountiful gifts of God were present in this moment. Right, Mark? She's an amazing lady. Um, but both uh, Marcella Holmes and Ruth T. Holmes, uh, Marcella Gardens, are just around the corner from where Mark grew up and where Antonio grew up. Uh, so this is even more significant to all of us. A place where the most vulnerable brothers and sisters will live in a beautiful home with services and amenities that, they, that matter to them, not to us. A gym and even a dance studio. So, in closing, I just want to say un abrazo con todo corazón to CRCD Alejandro Martinez, who has championed this project brilliantly to our team, uh, Ali Martacardi and Cheryl Bates for making uh, this work, regardless of the hard work. And to thank you for Amity Foundation to partnering and supporting us and to all of you for being here today. So thank you so much. Uh, let's give it up for B again. B Stott, sir. I uh, messed up your name, B. I don't know where that slip up came, but uh, thank you. <laughs> thank you, B. I would like to bring up another partner of ours who um, I enjoy um, partnering with, um, Doug Bond with the Amity Foundation. Not only are we partnering on this project, but we're partnering to make sure brothers and sisters returning um, from prison actually have opportunities and employment and opportunities to actually work on this project and live in units that will be at this project. Um, so without further ado, CEO, President and CEO with Amity Foundation, Doug Bond. Thank you, Mark. Uh, I really want to thank the mayor's office for being here, uh, City Councilman Price. Thank you for your continued support, uh, County Supervisor. I really want to thank the state as well as the mayor mentioned is really important for these collaborations to take place. Uh, a little story, I met Mark about 15 years ago 
actually. We were working with people that were uh, coming out of homelessness, incarceration, uh, and going through our services. And a lot of the kids that would come through to visit the, were uh, had little CRCD shirts on uh, and were the, the children of the, the parents that we were serving in our programs. And we're truly connected with Mark on that level. I myself was a foster child. Uh, four generations of my family have been impacted by incarceration, poverty, homelessness, addiction, trauma. And so this is deeply uh, uh, personal for us, making sure that we truly create generational change and that we really have social progress in our communities. Uh, this site will help create economic development, and I want to thank B and New Economics for Women for their support of this as well. I uh, truly appreciate all the public-private partnerships and philanthropic collaborations that go on to make these partnerships happen. And I want to thank our board chair, uh, Greg Matthews, who's here today to help support us and our organization as well as these collaborations go forward. Thank you, Alejandro, for your vision of this with Mark Wilson, and thank you for the vision to make this happen for a lot of young adults and for a lot of uh, families in our community. Thank you. would like to bring up the uh, the man who made a lot of this happen, a lot of countless hours. I would would be remiss if I didn't recognize the project manager on this as well, Araceli, or there she is. Give it up for Araceli that worked so many countless hours on this, um, as well as to the real estate team, um, Jessica and Jared and others that there she is in the back. They wor really worked a lot of countless hours getting this project not only um, acquired, um, but but holding it and the many stories that goes along with that to where we are today. So thank you all for what you've done. Um, Alejandro, the man with the plan, the man that makes it happen. Alejandro Martinez, Chief Real Estate Officer with CRCD. Good afternoon, everyone. Buenas tardes. Everybody's good? All right, so uh, I want to take a moment to thank all of our funders, our partners. Uh, the list, the list is, is, is a little long, uh, but please bear with me because it could not have been done without all of these folks, without all of you here. As I look into the crowd, every one of you has played a part in the development of these two developments until we are today. So I'll start off with our lending partner, California Bank and Trust, Steve Herman. The housing department, the Los Angeles Housing and Community Investment Department, I'd like to thank Ann Sewell. The County of Los Angeles, formerly the LA CDC, which is now the LA County Development Authority, I'd like to thank Emilio Salas. The Housing Authority of the City of Los Angeles, Doug Guthrie. The County of Los Angeles Department of Mental Health, I'd like to thank Renee Turner. I'd like to thank the Local Initiative Support Corporation, or LISC, to new with Rash. I'd like to thank the Corporation for Supportive Housing, or CSH. I'd like to thank TCAC, the Tax Credit Allocation Committee, Judith Blackwell. I'd like to thank the California Debt Limit Allocation Committee, Judith Blackwell again. Todd, NEF, National Equity Fund, is Todd here? Todd, I'd like to say thank you very much for believing in us. I'd like to thank the California Community Foundation, Sean Das. Sean, Maria Cabildo, you are awesome. California Community Foundation has a lot of love for CRCD, and um, I, I can't say enough uh, 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 to them. Um, the Wangar Foundation, Rosa Benitez, thank you. The United Way, I'd like to thank the United Way for all of their support. I'd also like to start to thank the, the team that is uh, uh, doing the bricks and mortar, right? The, the folks that are out here every day uh, working. So uh, I'd like to thank all the workers, all of our, uh, the engineers, architects. Uh, I'm gonna go th uh, through their names right now. So first and foremost, I'd like to thank Dreyfus Construction, Jim Dreyfus, thank you. Our, our architects, QDG Architects, Ricardo Rodriguez, thank you. Our construction manager, Gonzalo Gonzalez. Muchas gracias, Gonzalo. 
I'd like to thank the LA Housing Compliance team. Um, they're responsible for our local hire, so I'd like to thank you. Sunny's Construction. Where are you at, Sunny's? Sierra City Enterprise. Where are you at? Fernando, gracias. I'd like to thank the two project managers that were just amazing. I mean, I am so, so, so proud of you. Um, Jessica Soriano, I, I, I can't thank you enough. Uh, when it was just us two and the IT team uh, turning out these applications and pulling our hair, it was, it was intense. And I want to thank you for all your sacrifices. Uh, Araceli Soto, ¿dónde estás? Araceli, you are amazing. You are amazing, truly, truly amazing. I have, I've learned so much from you, from you and Jessica. I can't forget about Darrell and David. ¿Dónde están? Darrell, you two are, are, man, a couple of our unsung heroes. I want to thank you for all of your hard work, your diligence. You've been amazing. I'm, I'm very, very proud of you. Um, I'd also like to thank VCA Realty, Carlos Vasquez. The acquisition of this property was intense. That's something that, 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 that's a story that many times gets lost through history. Um, all, the, all of the lenders, our funders, um, uh, Councilman Corum Price, the supervisor's office, the mayor's office, uh, the board. Um, there's so many people that are instrumental that without, we would never be here today. So I want to take a moment to, to thank you. Um, um, I, I, I just wish um, uh, the world for you. And uh, I can't wait for our, uh, for our ribbon cutting. Thank you very much. Again, just want to um, thank everyone for coming out. Um, really appreciate this uh, moment. Um, want to now invite all of you um, to uh, take some photos. Lisa, if you can raise your hand. Lisa will provide um, instruction on um, posing in front of the actual um, shovels with the dirt to symbolize that we're getting this puppy off the ground. Um, thank you again. Um, thank you for the memory of Ruth Marcella Teague. So if you was wondering where Marcella came from, it's her middle name. Um, and thank you for being a part of continuing her legacy uh, here in South L.A. and throughout the county, bringing permanent supportive housing to these communities. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hey, we're going to bring in these guys here. Ready? First, let's dump it. Pick it up and dump to the right. To the right. To right? the right. One, two, three. Go. There we go. All right. <laughs>